Welcome to LongevityPost.com with Bob and Brian. In today's video, we're discussing a class of medicines known as proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs for short. They are widely known for their gastric acid suppressing effect in patients with symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. It's a disease at the medical cartel, and its affiliates obviously look upon quite differently than we do. And recognizable brands are Nexium, Prilosec, Prevacid, Ace Effex, Protonix, and all of these have active ingredients ending with prazole, such as omniprazole, lanosoprazole, pantoprazole. The first version of these popular drugs set foot on Earth almost 40 years ago. And 27 years later, in 2008, the PPI market has an estimated turnover at $14 billion, with a B dollars. Wow, Brian. So we should have obviously gone into the petrochemical poison industry instead. Yes, but it's a killing machine for profit. So how do they sleep at night? Yeah, one wonders. So Brian, PPIs, they kind of raise stomach pH by blocking the pumps from producing hydrochloric acid, right? Yes, and the class name indicates they pretty much makes a lifetime nightmare for a proton pump enzyme working in the parietal cells of the stomach. So by consuming Nexium or any of those other prazole poison pills, the natural functionality of these proton pumps is irreversibly blocked, leading to a temporary ease for some sufferers, but significantly increases the risk of future imbalances, Bob. But this approach seems to fit well with established mainstream logic on how to deal with bodily symptoms. Uh, instead of trying to understand the cause to why the GERD symptoms arise and then heal the underlying imbalance, suppression by aggression seems to be the weapon of choice here. It kind of reminds me of politics nowadays. Yeah, it does seem that way, doesn't it? Uh... I mean, why try to have respectful and constructive discussions, including a wide range of opinions, when you can instead trash universities, beat up opponents, and mock principles this great nation was built upon? True that, Brian, true that. Returning to the equally rotten domains of the pharmaceutical poison platform, uh, as you mentioned earlier, these products have been around for quite some time. They do have so-called scientific evidence behind them, and frankly, many doctors would probably not want to stop recommending them anytime soon. On a side note, though, I actually have a dear friend who more or less swears by his PPI medication. Without it, he is coughing like crazy day in and day out, and simply don't dare to quit them. So could you summarize the mainstream medical cartel's PPI theory, and why some folks actually believe they are helped by these drugs? The medical cartel has successfully convinced people that stomach acid is the problem, never mind that in our youth we have plenty of it, and then as we get older, somehow we make too much. The truth is really not a one-sentence answer. It may result in a few different issues, but the important thing is that these acid blockers will result in a significant increase in a wide range of serious ailments. Okay, Brian, uh, could you please mention a few of the most common side effects from PPI usage? There's respiratory infection, pneumonia, kidney disease, cancer, and death, and that's just to name a few. And in the beginning, most of the common ones you're going to find are headaches, diarrhea, constipation, maybe some abdominal pain, fatulence, you know, otherwise known as gas, fever, uh, also nausea and vomiting. Well, this sounds like a no-brainer to me, actually. I, I, I don't think we want this stuff in our system, period. So if let's take my PPI friend and, and, uh, as an example. If he wants to escape from the patented Prasol prison, how should he do it? And, and trust me, I've heard him. He coughs like, you know, never-ending. Well, most people cannot stop using their PPIs easily or resort to eating them like tums like candy. And... and the reason is, well, according to a study out of Denmark, an approach like that sometimes can cause unbearable heartburn, and that would include coughing or other symptoms. So researchers recruited healthy volunteers with no history of heartburn, and they were randomly assigned to either Nexium or placebo. That basically means like a sugar pill. And after eight weeks on Nexium, the placebo was substituted without the subject's knowledge. The conclusion PPI therapy for eight weeks induces acid-related symptoms in healthy volunteers after withdrawal. In other words, even normal people without heartburn can experience symptoms if the drug is stopped suddenly. P 
People who take PPIs for a long time can really suffer. The excess acid production can last for several weeks. And that's why gradual withdrawal over two or three months may be necessary. But despite these facts, Brian, uh, doctors keep recommending them. Most physicians have been led to believe that PPIs are extremely safe, oh, you're a pharmaceutical representative, and could be taken indefinitely without worry. Many are not fully aware of these dangerous consequences. So what happens with these drugs uh, more than just the acid secretion? Stomach acid kills unwanted germs or microbes, so that bacteria might survive creep into the lungs and lead to pneumonia. And the data also suggests that hard-to-treat Clostridium difficile, an intestinal bug, can flourish more readily, and that can cause uncontrollable diarrhea when PPIs are on board. Okay, but can these PPIs cause nutrient deficiencies? Yes, there is a danger of nutrient deficiencies, including calcium, iron, magnesium, and vitamin B12. Without adequate calcium and magnesium, there may be an increased risk for fractures. Low levels of vitamin B12 can lead to symptoms such as nerve pain, confusion, memory problems, as well as blood abnormalities. Not sure if I dare to ask you this, but uh, is there anything else to worry about when talking about PPIs for you know long-term side effects? The latest concern is the discovery that acid-suppressing drugs may be linked to heart problems, you know, good old myocardial infarction. So researchers have figured out that PPIs lower levels of a natural compound called nitric oxide, and that's the stuff that relaxes your blood vessels and makes them more flexible. If drugs like Nexium can lead to stiffer arteries, that could cause cardiovascular complications, especially for people with existing heart disease. So obviously, Brian, uh, you know, PPIs are Unfortunately, a financial home run for the triad and just one of countless counterproductive pharma products being marketed towards the public. So, so how do we go about stopping these dangerous acid blockers? People who take PPIs for a long time can really suffer. The excess acid production can last for several weeks, and that's why gradual withdrawal over two to three months may be necessary. And while you're reducing the dose... At the same time, try something that maybe seems puzzling at first, Bob, and that would be to take betaine hydrochloride tablets or pills or capsules. Yeah, that does seem a bit strange. Can you explain? Well, betaine hydrochloride or HCL will increase the stomach acid, of course, and yet it will also reduce the fermentation or fermenting waste acids from too little stomach acid production. So let me kind of explain a little bit about that. When you are suppressing acid, the food you are ingesting is going to hang out in an area where it sits in the stomach, and there's a pyloric valve that's supposed to open up when there's enough stomach acid there. When you're increasing stomach acid, the pyloric valve will open, and then you can release the contents of the food in the duodenum, and that leads eventually into the lower intestine. So you don't really want food to sit there. Because if it's sitting there, it's going to start to ferment and create waste acids on its own. Uh, so that's something to consider. So this really resolves the problem, puts your body back in a normal balance. Okay, great information, Brian. Um, is there anything else you would like to mention? Okay, well, if you let's say if you don't really like the idea of taking a stomach acid pill like betaine HCL, you can also try taking something called DGL instead. And this is some kind of licorice extract, right? That's exactly right, Bob. That's exactly right. So DGL stands for deglycerated licorice. Uh, there's other ways to say it. Uh, 15 minutes before you eat. Now, these even kind of taste good. Um, so you try taking a DGL licorice tablet. And if you get that acid feeling in your stomach, just pop a DGL and it should really help a lot. So, Brian, my last question to you, uh, you know, for, for people listening to this, uh, being on these horrible drugs, uh, wanting to quit, can you just give them a very simple summary on, on how to quit the, the purple pill or, or similar? Sure, Bob. 
So there's a challenge with these PPIs in general because when you do quit them, if you quit them cold turkey, you know, there may be some uncomfortable effects such as, you know, your friend. So you really need to gradually and very, very, very gradually withdraw from them. As sort of stated earlier in our conversation, it may take up to three months to completely kick them, if you will, to kick them to the curve. So uh, that's why you want to use things like DGL or, or some stomach acid to kind of complement that and allow your body to gradually deal with uh, dropping these poisons very, very subtly, very slowly over a period of time because dropping them cold turkey could just result in your body ill-equipped and may cause you know, worse symptoms. What's so interesting about the pharmaceutical industry is that they come up with products that create you to be kind of not knowing how to function without being poisoned. And uh, that's an insidious uh, profit-making venture that hooks them for life. And um, you want to unhook yourself from being poisoned. 